76ers and um, Joel Embiid and his status and what that could mean going into the season. So um, I'd like to remind everyone about Embiid's status. He, um, for those of you who don't know, Joel Embiid suffered a torn meniscus and will most likely be sidelined for the rest of the season and arguably come playoff time. Depending on how quickly um, he recovers, obviously, you know, this could be subject to change, but he's most likely going to be sidelined the entire season. And I guess in the end, Kendrick Perkins ended up being right, saying that the Sixers should shut down Joel Embiid. And I'm very shocked that he ended up being right, because we know how um, questionable his takes can be, but I digress. Um, while Embiid is out, Tyrese Maxey definitely stepped up in this game in the starting lineup after you know coming back from his injury. Uh, he had a masterclass, dropping 51 points to help win after um, the Sixers have been losing three games straight. <clears throat> Tobias Harris um, had 28 and 7, and Kelly Oubre ended with 16. <clears throat> the team did okay, but they didn't do as well as um, they did against Denver uh, when Embiid set out. And it might have been because Maxi was being a little bit of a ball hog that game, um, because he only ended the game with one assist and he had 51 points. But at the end of the day, who could blame him? He had 51 points. So he was doing the scoring, but the Jazz kept the game close, uh, even with Tyrese going off. Laurie Markkinen had 28, Sexton had 22, Clarkston ended with 16 points and 10 assists. But still, like, then again, I'm very, like, I feel like they, um, the team should have been playing a little bit better, given how they played against um, the Denver Nuggets. But... As always, like, you know, this is a new, it's a new thing, like, not playing with um, your best player. And, like, it's obviously, like, you still need to adjust. So, like, I'll give them, I give them some more time on adjusting because it's really weird not playing with your best player and whatnot. And both teams played overall, played a great game. It was a great matchup. So the big question for the Sixers is where do they go from here? Because right now Philly is fifth in the Eastern Conference. And with him beat out for most likely the entire season, um, where do they go from here? Because Embiid is their best player. And despite Embiid not being on the roster, I've seen several games where Tyrese Maxey has played better without Embiid on the court. So maybe that will hold true continuing on with the season and Maxey will be able to keep their team afloat in the playoffs. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical before about this team in the postseason with Embiid. Now I'm just like a little bit scared. I, like I'm, I'm even more scared because like we have to wait and see like how the Sixers respond um, to Joel Embiid's injury. And depending on how they respond and how they play, it could go one of two ways. The Sixers will either, um, I still think they'll make the playoffs because I still think Tyrese Maxey is going to be able to keep them afloat. But then they'll have, they'll be forced to be in a relatively low seed and go up against much difficult competition like the Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, if they go up against the Bucks, I think they're done because they don't have the matchups in order to guard Giannis. I don't think that they have um, a good enough defender to be able to hold Giannis and um, stop him from producing in the playoffs. And again, with the, the same thing applies for the Celtics. I don't think they have enough firepower to be able to produce on um, when compared to Boston Celtics and their firepower. And, but at the same time, this could all be subject to change depending on how they respond to Joel Embiid's injury. Now, the reason why I say this is because, like, Joel Embiid's play style is not for the playoffs. Flailing around his body isn't going to give him free throws in the postseason. The way he does it and the way he constantly looks for it it's not going to get him anywhere, and it's, he's shown countless and countless of times in so many different postseason appearances that, that it's not going to work. And also, I personally don't think isolation works in the postseason, especially when you're looking for fadeaway mid-ranges. Like, Kobe said this, Kobe said, Kobe's been through this, Kobe said this on interviews countless of times. He says, isolation, it doesn't work, and it's not something that... Um, should be done long term and it's not something that a team should rely on in order like come playoff time like it becomes much more difficult to manage because what if Joel Embiid or what if your star player that's isoing can't get you 30 who do you fall back on 
if you're the like if you're the Sixers or if you're any other team for that matter. Like I can give them um, in 2018, um, the Houston Rockets when they went up against Golden State in um, the Western Conference Finals, and um, we all know how good that Houston Rockets team was, um, winning like 72 games. And um, wait, no, pardon me. They did not win that many games. Excuse me. They won 67 games, and they played. Um, they were the first seed, and obviously, like, um, they were a very, very ISO-heavy lineup. And with James Harden and Chris Paul running the isolations and the pick and rolls, towards the end of that series, when they ended up into a game seven with Golden State, they ended up missing 27, 28 straight free th th straight three pointers. Pardon me. They missed 27, 28 straight three pointers, and obviously that hurts the team because like the style that they were fault that the style that they were playing with the isolation style while it was getting them their looks they still lost the game because they were missing the shots that they would normally hit and like it might have been it might have been more of a, like a choke job because like you know they were missing easy shots and open shots and the game was still a one and the game was still like they didn't lose by double digits in that game so if they would have just hit a few more they would have won that series but like relying on the iso and relying on taking those types of shots that Joel Embiid takes, especially, is not something that's reliable to really fall back on. I feel this um, separation from Embiid in the starting lineup and with that style of play, I feel like without him in the starting lineup, it will be more open to ball movement from the team and thus much more options on the offensive end. But then again, given how Tyrese Maxey played this game, it could also do the direct opposite, where Tyrese becomes the ball hog, and Tyrese becomes the one that um, starts doing all the isolation. But we'll see how the team responds. And the team, the way I watched this team, they played with a lot more heart in this game than they would normally with Joel Embiid on the floor. When I watch when I watch Embiid play, he seems like he seems relatively sluggish, like on the defensive end, compared to what he was in his um, in his first three years on the defensive side of the ball. Like he moves, like he moves a little bit sluggish. He doesn't like put much. E it doesn't look like he puts much effort into his movement at all. And as the best player on the team, if your role players see you giving no effort, then what makes you think that they're going to give any more effort than you? And I know it sounds like I'm, I'm ripping on Embiid, but he has had no major success in the playoffs. And what he does in the playoffs clearly doesn't work. So I'm not trying to rip on him or his play style, but it's just it's clearly proven that it doesn't work and something needs to change. And like part of it, you know, it's part of it is probably because like he he does have his he does have his moments where he doesn't perform in the postseason. Like obviously everyone has their moments. But he, it doesn't look like he improves on these mistakes that he makes. It doesn't look like he's learned because he keeps repeating and doing the same thing over and over and over again with that play style that he likes to run. Not to mention, he's only had one healthy postseason in his career. One healthy postseason, and that was a sweep. So that was only, he only played four games, and that's the only postseason where he wasn't injured. Some people might say, you know, it's unfair to judge because of, like, his injuries. But your best ability is your availability. Like, I const I've been saying this, like, for the last episodes, like, all the time. But it, it holds true. If you're, going, if you're going to get hurt every postseason, then what's the point in, like, um, in doing all of this? Like, what's the, what's the point in being able to produce all of these numbers in the regular season and being able to do all of this by yourself if you're just going to completely injure yourself every single time. And the reason why I say injure yourself is because his play style contributes to his injuries, constantly falling on the ground. He can't afford to do that all the time. And again, this plays into like his playoff success because teams like the 76ers, like they would, when they need him to play in the postseason, he ends up not being there. And because he gets hurt, the team has to try and adapt to a whole new play style while in the playoffs because Embiid's out of the game. They have to change their entire, um, their, their entire offensive system. They have to completely readjust because they won't have Joel Embiid's production for either one or two games. And then when he comes back, he's not going to be the same player because he just came back from an injury. 
it's it's a repeated cycle that's been going on for every single postseason that he's been in. And it's much better for a team if they stick with the offense that they know and that they've been playing with in the playoffs or like throughout the regular season. So playing with each other constantly so that that way they don't have to worry about making that many game like changing the game plan that much. So that way when they do have to change the game plan, like legitimately change the game plan, they can focus on that, but they'll still have like the offense and the systems that they were previously running intact because of the muscle memory and because of the constant practice and the constant use of that offensive system. Now, it might not show up on the averages, but he's like, it might not show up on the averages of Joel Embiid in the postseason, like being, um, not being a good performer, which is another factor that plays into what I think, which is, it, let me, let me restart with that. Joel Embiid not um, being in the postseason, I think, could end up helping the Sixers in the future simply because, as I mentioned earlier, all the statements that I mentioned earlier, and as well as Joel Embiid not necessarily being a good performer in the postseason. Now, it might not show up on the averages, but he's just one of those players that you could just tell. It's like Chris Paul um, in the playoffs where um, his numbers are great, but we all know his reputation and we all know that he tends to just underperform in this um in the postseasons but if the Sixers like they get used to running a lineup without Embiid like before Joel Embiid gets into the post before they get into the postseason and they have much more experience in that lineup I feel like it will definitely help them and they could make some noise in the postseason because come postseason a lot of teams already have a defensive plan and a defensive um I, a defensive mindset set up for the team that they match up against and every single time when a team matches up against the Sixers, the defensive style is to try to hold Embiid. And if you hold Embiid, you essentially hold the rest of the Sixers because Joel Embiid is the main piece of that offense. And when Joel Embiid doesn't perform, which he usually does, then the offense um, struggles. And he usually underperforms after coming off of injuries and after um, the team is so used to playing with that play style and that isolation play style that it's really difficult for them to adapt mid um, mid series to not having Embiid's production while at the same time still focusing on the series itself. So doing that all during the playoffs, it's a major toll mentally and it could cause the team to just like, you know, flat out completely mess up because they're doing things like outside of the norm and outside of their like their muscle memory. So not having Embiid in the lineup now and practicing without Embiid in this lineup with the lineup that they're running uh, will definitely prepare them for the postseason, in my opinion. Because now, the Sixers are a much more unpredictable team now. Because now that they don't have Joel Embiid, you don't know exactly what they're going to do on offense. I mean, obviously, you know they're going to give the ball to Tyrese Maxey and run a couple of isolations here or there. But I don't think that they're going to run isolations with Maxey all the time like they do with Joel Embiid and like, you know, completely replace Joel Embiid with Maxi in that sense. But again, we don't know. We have no idea what the 76ers offensive game plan is going to be, which gives them a much bigger advantage going into the postseason because a lot of teams are able to prepare for um, like the offensive minds and like the offensive sets that um, teams usually run in the matchups. But now that Joel Embiid is out, this is a whole new offense that a bunch of the teams in the Eastern Conference have to learn and have to learn how to adapt and have to learn how to defend. Um, assuming that Nick Nurse um, uses his, utilizes his rotations as good as he usually does and um, utilizes like, um, the game plan um, and to the best of his ability, the sky is the limit for um, the 76ers. And it's all dependent on how they respond with Joel Embiid's injury. And that's the important part, whether they lie down and accept defeat or they so, or they accept the challenge and they try to rise up and prove all of the doubters wrong that they could do such things without Embiid and his play style. But with that, we are out of time with um, this segment and I'm going to tune in, tune in for the next segment where I talk about, I give um, a quick recap of the games as well as the Lakers surprisingly beating the Boston Celtics. And I will do that right after this short break. So I'll see you then. <laughs> 